Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a brand new video and this one is going to be focused on the delightful Squirrel Girl. Now, one thing I wanted to do is with the, well, let's face it, teasing of that image that uh, Dave did, the fact is I wanted to kind of learn a bit more about Squirrel Girl because the fact is I don't really know much about the character. I know that it's been a character a lot of players have talked about, but I don't really know much about her. So let's learn a little bit more and also talk about potential abilities we're likely to see next month. Also, just before the video kicks off, please remember to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and help support the channel. That's amazing. Thank you very much. Now let's kick off with her early life. Doreen Green was born to Dorian and Maureen Green. She suffered a modification in her genes for unknown reasons that granted her squirrel-like abilities, which manifested predominantly in the form of a prehensile tail. When her parents consulted with a doctor, it was determined that Doreen wasn't a mutant even though she believed so for a long time. This leaves me to have more questions and more queries when it comes to the way that Kabama classing. Now, I'm still unsure whether or not this points to, in this image here, a mutant-based character setup, or is it a case that they'll go skill with this champion? Any other types of ones look silly. They could make some sort of Kabam-based law that goes, right, well, the champion should be a science, but I don't know. It is still very much question marks. But it looks to me that this may be a mutant based character or more than likely a skill based character in the future. Now moving on in her development, when she reached the age of 10, Doreen discovered she could communicate with squirrels after overhearing one of these rodents in a window. She subsequently saved this squirrel from being chased by a dog and they became friends. The squirrel, who identified himself as Monkey Joe, encouraged Doreen to use her abilities to help people. Ever since then, Doreen began to fantasize about becoming a superhero and came up with the alias of the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl certainly had some weird adventures. First and foremost, she tried to get Iron Man to, to kind of put her underneath his wing, and there was a chance encounter with Doctor Doom, and she ended up saving the day by just getting squirrels to swarm him, as you do. There's also another chance encounter with Hulk. He crashed land whilst fighting Abomination, and then got squirrels to attack Abomination and help out Hulk in the process. And from then, she then went to work in Central Park or fight crime in Central Park. So she's certainly done some weird things, but has obviously tried to be a superhero of sorts. Also, something that I find really weird is in some kind of like weird future type thing, they decide to smash the mutated genes together of Deadpool and Squirrel Girl and create Squirrel Pool. It's not, it's not something I knew about, but I'm like, God. <laughs> This looks, uh, well, horrible. And it's actually classed as like the daughter of uh, both uh, Deadpool and Squirrel Girl. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty nasty to look at. She certainly has found herself in really kind of weird situations as well. Like she became the nanny of Daniela Cage, who is the daughter of Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. And that is just so weird to find her just interweaving so many different characters' story arcs. There's also something I find quite interesting for the puzzle, because there is a little off to the side from Sunspot, and especially if you do the research on this, where after second year of college, Squirrel Girl becomes a member of Sunspot's new Avengers and transitions into the US Avengers when Sunspot began working for S.H.I.E.L.D. Now that's important, because if you look at the way that that puzzle looked there was a little kind of off from sunspot now i did say that, that was going to be something like the scientist supreme however though this could actually fit in well based on this story arc. but again you've got to watch out for kabam's red herrings with those question marks and puzzles i think the question now points to what kabam will look to put into game and will they tie into a lot of the abilities and powers from the comic book sources? And will it be a case that she'll be super strong? Because that's something that she's kind of underrated. People look at her and go, like, oh, she's a squirrel. She's pathetic. Well, no, not exactly. Especially because she can lift between 800 pounds to 25 tons. I don't know how they would try and put something in game for that. But, you know, damage output could be key. Especially with things like jaw strength. Because she'll be biting similar to what a squirrel does when it bites down. So will it be a case that uh, bite is going to be part of the animations? Is it going to be something of 
uh, important. Also, leaping. I mean, it's not something you're going to see in game, but you could see in animations with an SP2, SP3, maybe even an SP1, or could be something for a, for a heavy attack, similar to where we've seen the likes of Reed Richards do that kind of upward and hit down. Could we see something with a leaping factor to this? There's also other elements that are really missed out, and whether or not Kavan will try to put this in, I don't know. Night vision, I don't think it's going to be something that they would put in. Climbing, again, could be something to do with animations. It would be nice to see some different backgrounds to uh, to some stuff, similar to what they did with with Namor, but I know that's kind of like, well, it's water pulsating in the same area, so we're not gonna see something like, okay, well now we're in Central Park, up a tree for some reason, but you never know what Kabam could uh, pull out the bag. We saw Doctor Doom and sending through the portals. Th there could be so many things. Anyway, the tail has got to have some sort of impact. They'll have to do some damage, of course, and we'll probably do something in the in the kind of like the basic attacks even the lights mediums and transitioning with the combos more than likely a knuckle spike Scrogo has a retractable knuckle spike capable of carving through solid wood could we see bleeds from this champion that could be another option as well for Kabam to put in and not to mention the fact even uh, communication with squirrels well yeah we're probably going to see in the animations sp2 sp3 squirrels swarming the enemy of course we're going to see that and then finally regenerative healing factor regen for the champion Possibly, who knows? I don't know because we've got recovery, and I always think that's kind of Kabam tapping into that 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 law of uh, of comic books by saying, well, every champion can technically regen based on that. Depends how how deep you go in it. But if we could see some regen in the future, yeah, that that would be amazing. Either way, I'm really excited for January. Really excited to see what they do with Squirrel Girl, and you know. Players may really jump on this. If Kaban put together a decent champion, the damage outputs pretty well. I can really see tying into those decent abilities as we've seen that we're going to have a great champion and hopefully a great start to the year. Where last year we had Thing and we had Diablo. Thing is amazing, but when it comes to Diablo, it kind of missed the mark. So with Nova and Squirrel Girl entering in, in January, I think this is going to be a very, very exciting time to start the year off. But anyway, what are your thoughts on this champion edition? in January. What are your thoughts on the abilities? Do you think that Kabam should make her a mutant? Maybe not so a mutant. What are your thoughts? Put them in the comment section down below. Check out some other content and I'll see you in the next one. We'll be doing Nova. Bye bye for now.